Coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. Welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. I am Brett Berkey, and this is Rick Allen here. That's the name they gave me. That's right. We are back. We had to take a week off. We are doing some moving around. Moving the studio, we are moving to a bigger location. Bigger, better, better. Yeah. Own parking lot type stuff. High like, tech. Yeah. Yeah. We're all Walk grown right up. in. All grown up. Yeah. Some new eating places, which is going to be fun because we've eaten everything around here. So looking forward to have a whole new place to eat and a whole new side of the, side of the street. And so that's the, what, what we missed last week. Sorry if you were waiting for it, but we are going to be trying to be consistent from here on out. If, hopefully we won't miss any more. But uh, so that's pretty much that. What else is going on? It's uh, super cold here in Florida. Oh I know. Gosh. Sorry. I know everyone's at, for Florida. It's cold because I don't have long johns and I don't have thick socks. And this last week I was, I decided to. What's funny is it's going to, he needs long johns because it's going to be like in the thirties. <laughs> I just know what long johns are like as like long underwear or something, but yeah, I haven't. Not, yeah, no, that's exactly what yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, thermals, some people call them thermals. Thermals, yeah. Like an idiot, this last week, I, I decided, hey, it's not as hot. I'm going to go ahead and I got one of those new smart thermostats. And so I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it. And so I took it off the wall in the thermostat, but it's a bigger hole. So I had to pad shit and I'm doing all this stuff. And I finally, I get around to installing the new one and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> Mr. Low part. There's no heat in the house. And so I'm like, oh, crap. And, and my wife just... For the time being, put the old one back on. I was like, yeah. Threw, threw it out. Trash day was yesterday. <laughs> it's in the trash cans. So we were walking around with like sweatshirts and with bat robes, drinking hot tea. I had my hands over the stove, just heat my hands. But I, I, I had to eventually have one of my buddies come out. And it, it wasn't me this time. It was the actual thermostat was faulty. I'm going with that. I'm going with that. So that's what it wow. was. But Rick, this week we're talking about something that's Something came up in a group I'm a part of called uh, Wealth of That Wall Street, where there's different ideas that are floating around. And people talk about short-term rentals, talk about fix and flips, whatever, all these different strategies. And of course, I talk about notes. And so there's a couple of people in there that are intrigued. And they're like, I'm already in real estate. They're, they're probably hearing the same things where you started, like tired of the, you know, the fix and flip. I, I want to have something. Uh, I want something a little bit more passive. And uh, they're like, how did I transition to from? And I was like, I didn't transition. I I Rick did, though. I made the jump. Rick made the jump. So really what we're doing here is we're going to start a small series this next upcoming couple of weeks. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe because each week we'll be putting out a new episode about the transition. How to make the real, jump. Yeah, the transition from real estate to mortgage notes. Yep. Um, why to do it, how to do it, and why now is the time to do it, really. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a fantastic investment class. If you're investing in real estate right now, you, you have such a head start. Not that you can't start from scratch, but if, if you've been investing in real estate, it's an easy transition. And we're going to talk a little bit about why. Mm. But before we do that, we've got a sponsor for today's podcast. That's right. And what better way to segue into this is it's the, the DME Expo, where we'll, you can go learn all about mortgage notes. And we've got a little something to play for you here from the DME, talking a little bit about the Expo. Over the last year and a half, low interest rates and trillions of dollars in government support has fueled record home price growth, the highest stock market in history, and inflation rates higher than we've seen in decades. But as history shows us, what goes up also comes down. Clark Street Capital, one of the leading loan investment firms, recently said they believe the credit picture for banks is not as pristine as the numbers suggest. As they put it, excessive stimulus has a way of covering up problems. 2022 is shaping up to be the year this all unfolds, which is why on March 10th and 11th, 2022, over 175 investors, private lenders, and industry experts will be meeting in St. Petersburg, Florida to network and learn at one of the top note investing conferences of the year, the Diversified Mortgage Expo, or the DME. This two-day event will have speakers like industry expert Marina Walsh, the vice president of analytics at the Mortgage Bankers Association, and over a dozen experienced hedge fund managers and investors who collectively have managed billions of dollars worth of mortgage notes over the last decade. Whether you invest in performing loans, non-performing loans, first or seconds, a massive opportunity is coming, and the Diversified Mortgage Expo can help you prepare to profit. To learn more about the event or register, visit diversifiedmortgageexpo.com. Again, to register or learn more about the DME, 
visit diversifiedmortgageexpo.com. And we're back. The Expo, hope to see you there. I'll be there. Brett will be there. It's going to be cool. Up on stage speaking about sourcing inventory with somebody from Granite, not Granite, Chaz, Chaz Gwynn from Resol uh, Revolve Capital. And I'll be at the booth handing out tote bags. Yeah, come by and get, your, <laughs> get yourself a tote bag. Yeah, it's going to be cool because I'm excited. There's a lot of people I know online that I just know online. I know their profile pic. I don't really know what they look like day to day. But, you know, this I mean, I've talked and like, yeah, we're all going to Distress Mortgage Expo. And it's in St. Pete. St. Peter's. St. Pete, yes. Yeah. It's at the Hilton. Yeah, so it's Hilton Bayview or something like that. Yeah, so it's going to be good. A lot of people, good no crew. St. Pete's gorgeous. So if you haven't been, it's a great place to just go down to the beach too. But after that, let's talk a little about the transition, Rick. So Rick was an investor in real estate for over a decade, right? Yeah. Of course, you all, if you've listened to the podcast, I stumbled into it and they accidentally got into note investing. It started not accidentally doing it, but then when I really bought my first house by accident, not by accident, but it was just took a chance. It took a gamble. Yeah. Eight thousand dollars. say luck. It's preparation and opportunity holding hands. So that's what it was. It was, I was prepared to take the swing and an opportunity presented itself. So I did. And it worked out. Fast forward, here we are talking to you on this podcast about it. But so the interesting thing about real estate investing and how it's an easy transition to mortgage notes is it still all revolves around real estate, right? Because mm -hmm. mortgage notes, um, mortgage debt, it's backed by a tangible asset in real estate. One of the biggest things you have to do in this is understand worst case scenario, I take the asset back. How do I manage the actual real estate? You have mm -hmm. to know how to evaluate the real estate. You have to know as far as valuations go, you have to know how to manage a rehab, estimate a rehab understand the area, look at a house from pictures and get an idea of what's going on with the house. So a lot of the everyday stuff you do as a real estate investor, it just, it dovetails so nicely with note investing. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Huh. That is interesting good. to know. And then you have this good groundwork that you have for real estate investing. Mm -hmm. What is the first or second layer that would be needed for note investing? I think education is it. Okay. I think educating when you're making that pivot or you're making the jump or you're adding, I don't want to say pivot or jump because as a note investor, you're still always a real estate investor, right? It's just another opportunity. You don't say, I just invest in Apple stock. Maybe you do, but most people invest in the stock market. They're diversified. They invest in the stock market. They do some real estate. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're doing some Bitcoin or some, mm -hmm. uh, some cryptocurrency stuff along those lines. So adding notes to it is not saying I'm never investing in real estate again and saying I'm adding the ability to invest in notes. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're educated on that. And that's, you know, whether that be, you know, the Paper Stack Academy, whether that be doing something, you know, with events, like huge, you can learn so much from events and you can learn so much from just being around people in the note space. How much have you learned? You haven't had formal education about notes. I know. I've, I've learned a lot just by seeing what people say in yeah. Facebook groups and just being a part of that. And everyone's pretty giving with their knowledge. By session. knowing me. Yeah. But I'm, Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm asked all the questions. So I get the questions. Yeah. No, but it, just being around people, talking with people at the events, you hear different stuff and you should always be learning. So education is number one. So that right. is, you should educate yourself for doing it. But yeah. The, also, the, the really cool thing is that if you are in real estate, the idea of how you evaluate a note always usually pulls back to value, right? You're always, you're always, always plan, you know, planning always. for the worst. And as a real estate agent or an a, a investor, how to understand the value of the house, what, the, what it's going to be for rehabs or the yeah, ARVs what's, and all what's those the, things like that. What's the loan to value? What's your investment to value? The ARV, after repair value, all those things. After repair value doesn't really, that's, that always raises a red flag because I think wholesaler, they talk about ARV, but it's something you calculate in there for sure. If you're looking at a house and you say, okay, what is this house worth? Right now, in its current condition, what is it if I did quick sale it? And what is it if I put a bunch of money into it and fix it up? Because that you'll hear some people say after repair value doesn't matter for notes. It does matter for notes if you have to take the house back right. because you want to know what's the house worth. And there's been several houses that we've wound up foreclosing on where we had a quick sale value of 130 and an after repair value of 220. And if you put in 25 grand or 30 grand, it's, it makes sense. You, it, it, the lift is worth it. Yeah, now, right. sometimes the lift isn't worth it, but that's why you want to, having that real estate background is so 
valuable because you're used to those numbers. You're used to looking at something and saying, is this a paint and carpet deal or is this a whole new kitchen, new bathroom? We're going to do that. And you can then, you have that experience of running multiple different rehab scenarios. Because I'll tell you this, paint and carpet is much easier and quicker than doing to opening up walls or put, yeah. Once you start opening up walls, (laughs) he he liked to say that. (laughs) It's shit, it's the fan. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's interesting. So yeah, throughout this this series, we're going to want to keep these short and concise. But short and to, sweet, we're going to uh, talk about them. Yeah, we're probably going to try to just go 10 minutes in each video. So the, the first one is just showing you what else you need to know. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about what are the next layers of due diligence you probably would need to know. Yep. So you, you understand how to run values. You understand how to do, you know, if, if you need to repair or whatever, what it's going to be worth as a real estate investor. In our next episode, we're going to talk about the things you need to know as due diligence on the borrower. Running due diligence on the bar. There's definitely a lot we're, we're going to cover in the next episode, uh, and especially like why now? Why now? That's important. Why now? Mm-hmm. The next episode, I'm going to tell you why now is the time to start investing or, or to make that transition. And believe me, it is un- it's a global thing that's coming right now. So you want to have this bullet in your gun. That's right. But yeah, so we're going to leave it here. If you have not subscribed and you've just first time seeing this or hearing it, please subscribe because you don't want to miss this series. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Stay warm out there and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See ya. See ya.